Welcome, Crossroads family, all those who are joining us online, those here in East Hartford. Isn't God good? Yes, He is faithful. We are so happy you're here. My name is Sterling. I'm one of the pastors here on staff. And maybe if you're online, if you just want to say something you're grateful for, let us know that you're joining us in worship today. Uh, those here in East Hartford, God is good. I know we could list things that we can say of God's goodness, of ways that He just constantly shows love. And you know what He requires back? Us to just love Him us to follow him. He is so, so good. I want to encourage you, if you're here in East Hartford or you're online, it's so easy. Uh, sometimes we have to take a step forward to make something happen. And we, we want to encourage you. We want you to connect with us. And so you can text the number 80123, 80123. You can text connection and it'll give you an opportunity to, to tell us your name. We want to know your name. We want to know your prayer requests. Did you know every week we have people praying over you? Isn't that awesome? When you give us a prayer request, we have people who get emails. And they'll stop with leaders who will pray over those requests and intercede with you. Not just, we're praying with you. We want to see uh, God's faithfulness constantly and, and our eyes on Him. But we know that our God provides. We know that God is with us. And so, so get connected. And it also gives you an opportunity. Maybe you say, well, I want to get connected in a small group. We have small groups on Zoom. Small groups in East Hartford, East Windsor. There are so many ways to find that connection with each other and then with God. Amen? God is faithful. And I just have to take a moment and say thank you. Uh, thank you for giving. I've heard over and over again of stories of God's faithfulness, of God providing, of God moving. Even in the midst of hurting, God bringing peace and bringing strength when there maybe, maybe there's a loss in a family. And in the midst of all of that, people continually are faithful to God and they're giving and their time weekly and spending it with Him. And that's what it's about. Our God is good. And as we begin to get ready for worship, everyone here in East Hartford, we're going to stand to our feet. I want to read a, a psalm. And I'm going to say, if you're at home, uh, maybe this is a moment where, I know some of you have a coffee or tea, maybe this is a moment where you just stop and close your eyes and just listen to these words. Here in East Hartford, if you're comfortable and you want, you can lift your hands. You know what that is? That's just a sign of surrender. Saying, God, I surrender. Whatever that trouble is, whatever that is, you don't have to carry that burden. Just listen to these words. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted, are you afflicted today? Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt His name together. We are family. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. We are in it together. We glorify you, Lord. I sought the Lord, hear this, and He answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. What fears do you have in your life right now? Is there something that's holding you back? He delivered me. Those who look, look to Him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Hear this crossroads. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. God, you, you see our fears. God, you see the things that sometimes we put as an idol in front of you, whether that's social media or a drug or a relationship, but you have called us to taste and see that you are good. So today, God, we come together to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God, that our focus won't be on me, but it'll be on you. We worship you today in Jesus' name. Everybody said... Amen. Let's worship, church. Good morning, church. Ready to worship together? You're a man.
Come on, church, let's give him a hand of praise. Come on, even though he's worthy to receive praise. Come on, someone shout amen. amen. Come on, we're here to praise him. Come on, let's put those hands together just like this. No matter what you're facing, we're going to praise him because he is faithful, amen, to see us through. Come on, let's sing this together. To high raise a hallelujah. So in the presence of my enemies. Yeah. And I raise a hallelujah. Louder than the unbelief. Come on, sing it with me. So I raise a And my weapon is a melody. And I raise a hallelujah. Cause heaven comes to fight for me. And I'm gonna sing yeah. in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder. You're gonna hear my praises roar. 
faithful. Amen. We bless your name, God. No one like you. Come on, I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what's in front of you today. But if we believe in his word, if he is faithful to every word, that's something that we can just raise our voices to heaven and say, thank you, Lord. We know that you are true. Not like man that you would lie. So come on, let's sing this prayer to heaven. Walking around these walls And I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battles won, for you have never failed me yet. Come on, one voice, sing your promise still stands. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence, you've never failed me yet. Sing, I know. And I know the night won't last, and your word will come to pass.
moment. Sing it out. Your promise still stands. Come on, church. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. And I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me yet. Come on, he's not like a man that he would lie. Come on, let's repeat that truth. Sing it out. You never fail me yet. Oh, you are God and God alone, yes. You never fail me yet. And I never will forget. And I never will forget. Oh, you never fail me yet. And I never you believe that church come on somebody shout amen come on give him one more hand of praise we bless your name lord let let our worship be pleasing to you god we give you praise and we give you thanks help us today as we hear your word and as we are challenged in jesus name we all say amen amen well thank you for worshiping church you may be seated suddenly didn't it? It was, it was good. I love that. I love that. We are here today and here in East Hartford and East Windsor we have the the courageous group with the snow a little bit coming down but not quite there totally. I don't know. What do you think? Juan? What do you think? How was it? Eh, it's all right. We're, 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 we're good. In East Windsor the snow's a little bit later on the on the forecast and I don't think it's going to be too much but we're excited to be here. Listen, if you have your Bibles with you today, uh, whether you're here in our East Hartford campus or in our East Windsor campus or online, go ahead and take them and open to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 13. We're going to go a few different places in, in Scripture today. We're going to start right there. Um, while you're turning there, I want to, uh, you, you should be aware that February is Black History Month. And one of the things that we're most excited about about our church is the diversity that exists here. Uh, it, it's, it's something that uh, 
that is attractive to, to all of us in so many ways. And so um, looking and celebrating different cultures isn't intended ever to be just a one-month thing. Uh, hopefully throughout the years you, you get to see uh, the diversity of the cultures that are here. Uh, but during the year as we go through, during different times, our, our, our country, our nation around us has taken some time to set apart different times. And February is Black History Month. I want to encourage all of you uh, to take opportunities like this to go out and look and understand, uh, become more aware in your own life uh, of some of what uh, you know the different cultures have brought, especially uh, our, our black culture has brought uh, uh, to us. And, and if you haven't yet connected to our social media at the church, uh, please, please, please get connected. Uh, on a day like today, it's the best place to find out about what, you know, what is snow doing, not doing, to what we're doing with services. There's a lot of things that we do through the year. But during this month, looking over the next several weeks, we're going to be pushing out some information that will help you in your awareness uh, around uh, you know, black history. And, and there will be some really cool things there. Uh, I'd encourage you to go out and do the research on your own. But we want to try to help and, and show off and just celebrate uh, some of the different culture that's there. So jump onto our social media. We'll help you that and a lot of other things. All right? We're kicking off today a new, new sermon series that we're calling Outbreak. Say Outbreak. A word we're all new, too, too familiar with, right? Uh, outbreak, uh, finding the cure. We are all way too familiar with the outbreak of COVID-19, which has turned uh, our world upside down over the past year. But interestingly enough, uh, this is not the only outbreak that has taken the world by storm. There's also been an outbreak of other things, as if, for instance, an outbreak of fear. Uh, you've probably noticed it. There's been an outbreak of worry, uh, an outbreak of depression in, in, in many times, many places. There's, in some ways, there's, there's an outbreak of selfishness that's come uh, into our society and so on and so forth. Well, these outbreaks that we're experiencing are influencing our spiritual health in the same way that COVID-19 is affecting many people's physical health. That's the bad news. Here's the good news. Just as there are tangible things that we can do to prevent the spread and the effect of COVID-19 in our lives, so too there are tangible things that we can do to prevent the continued spread of the myriad of outbreaks which uh, this time of COVID-19 has kind of helped stimulate in and all around us. So as we get started today, we're going to talk about the one that's probably the most annoying to talk about, all right? I say it's probably the most annoying. It's the most annoying for me as I struggle through uh, seeing what Scripture says and where we're, where we're going to want to go. Can, can we just all admit that from time to time as we read through the Bible, there are things that we struggle with more and struggle with less, right? Uh, this one all of us are going to argue with a little bit on, and you'll probably argue with me a little bit as we walk through the message. But today... We're going to look at the outbreak of disobedience. Say disobedience. Disobedience. There's an outbreak of disobedience uh, that, that, that is taking place in and all around us. So uh, March 17th, 2020. Uh, you may not know the significance of that day, but that day, March 17th, 2020, was the day that we all began to experience a new set of regulations that came into our life that began to restrict what we do uh, personally, what we do as it relates to businesses that we interact with, and what we do as it relates to uh, houses of worship, our church, and, and what we're able to do and not do. I'll never forget uh, that day and the days, the, the couple of weeks that followed uh, my first thoughts, just honestly, were probably similar to many others. I was busy trying to find some kind of legal loophole uh, in which we could kind of get out from under some of the regulations that they try to box you in under, right? But as I began to reach out to other Christian leaders uh, of the day, and uh, we tried to seek together to understand what, what is our biblical response? Because just in all of our lives, we have a natural response that this is what I want to do. But the Bible teaches us that our heart is deceitful. It leads us down wrong directions, right? And so, so we try to live our lives. We try to live uh, how, how we're going to respond as a church in these things, always by going back to the Bible and saying what God says. Well, as we begin to talk to other leaders and understand what we thought was the proper biblical response, 
uh, there, were, there were several verses that came to mind, but two verses out of the book of Romans probably popped up the most just, just because we're most familiar with them. And these verses are challenging verses. Here's what it says, Romans chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. It says this, everyone, say everyone. Anytime you hear the words everyone, everyone in Scripture, you know, brace yourself because it's, it's about to get interesting, right? When that's not there, you can say, well, that's just for them. That's not for me, and I can get around it. But everyone must submit. Say submit. That's the most challenging word that you're probably going to hear in Scripture. Submit. Submit is tough. Everyone submit himself to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except which that God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. So, all of this happened March of last year and um, and. In the end, for a period of a number of weeks, we canceled in-person services. For the first time that I know of, we did that over multiple weeks. And can I tell you, canceling service and going online was not something that anybody here wanted to do. It was the exact opposite of what we wanted to do. Why? Because we understand the value of the church being together. God tells us in his word, do not neglect the assembling together of yourselves. There is, it, it's nice to be able to pick up a phone and call somebody. It's wonderful on this day of technology uh, through FaceTime, through Zoom, through all, some of these things to be able to look at somebody on video and talk to them. But there is something about being with other people. I can't explain it. I don't fully understand it. There's probably a spiritual component to it. But there is this thing called presence, which changes things. And when you are in somebody else's presence, it, it, it makes things different. When you're talking about coming together to learn from God, to worship God, to be together, there is something about the presence of God's people being together that changes some things. And so we canceled in-person services, and we did it for one reason and one reason only. We believe that to not cancel in-person services, we felt, would have been rebelling against God. That's the clear teaching of Romans chapter 13. God has put authorities in place, and to rebel against them is to rebel against God. Now, uh, not every church took that perspective, right? Different churches used different perspectives and, go, and went different ways. Uh, but, but, but we chose to do that to try to honor this principle that God says that we are to follow what authorities say. God establishes authorities, we follow, right? And, and, and in this instance, we're talking about government authorities. And as we walk through this message, most of the time I'm going to be referencing government authorities. But hear and understand this. When God talks about authorities, he's talking about authorities in all areas of your life. And so that refers to uh, the authorities that you have at your workplace. That, uh, that may uh, uh, apply to authorities that you have at the school that you attend or, or, or different authorities in different places. And so what we're going to be talking about works into all of those kinds of things. So as we begin this series here today, and, and we're going to get into talking about uh, you know, things like depression and fear and those kinds of things as we talk about different outbreaks that are occurring. But as we begin this series, I want to share with all of us a quick reminder of our Christian responsibility to our governing authorities, to, to, our, uh, to those who are in authority in every area of our life, all right? So uh, I've got three different things that the Bible says are our responsibilities. Uh, even though there's an outbreak of disobedience all around us, here's our responsibility as Christians, all right? Three responsibilities. Uh, number one, number one should be the easiest of all of them for us. It says this, we are to pray for them. Say pray. pray. This should not be a difficult part of our responsibilities. But I'm telling you, because of the recent outbreak of disobedience all around us and in us, this is becoming a more challenging thing for us to do. 
Let's start with the idea that it doesn't matter if we're talking about uh, governing authorities. It doesn't matter what political party an individual is a part of. It doesn't matter whether they have different policies that they want to move forward that are, that are in contrast to the policies that you like. It doesn't matter whether you like the individual that fills an office or, or, you, or you dislike the individual. The Bible says in every circumstance as Christians, we are called to pray for them. So in the Old Testament, even when God's people were in captivity. So uh, we've got, we, if you imagine yourself being in, in a nation and, and you were in captivity inside that nation, uh, when, when God's people were in captivity in the distant land, uh, and this was a pagan land called Babylon, the Lord commanded them to respond this way. Jeremiah 29 verse 7 says this. Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. You say, well, I want to pray to the Lord, but I want to pray to the Lord that he sends fire and brimstone down on it, you know? I'm in captivity. God, wipe them out, you know? Is that what he says? No. Pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will find welfare. In the New Testament, we read the same concept. It says this in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. I urge then, first of all, that is before everything else, that requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone. Well, what do you mean when you say everyone? Well, for kings and all of those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness. And holiness. Now, that's just two examples out of tons of examples throughout Scripture where God tells us it doesn't matter what circumstance you are living in inside of a land, wherever that is, it doesn't matter how good or how bad or how good or how bad you perceive those in authority to be. Our first responsibility is to pray for those in authority. We ought to be praying for our president, whoever they are, whatever policies they have, whether we like them personally or dislike them. We ought to be praying for our governor, that God would give them wisdom, James 1.5, to lead us through this pandemic that we're walking through, to lead us in, in troubling times. But we ought to be praying them even when this, for them even when this crisis is over, Right? Prayer should be the easy one of these responsibilities. But let me ask you this. Here, here, here's the test question. You ready? How high on the priority list of the prayers in your life has this been? If you were to look back over the last three months that we've walked through, how much time in your prayer life have you devoted to praying for our leaders? Why is that? What's going on there? Where, where's the disconnect in all of that? I, I think it's because we, and I'm not speaking about you, but, but if you're a part of we, maybe I am speaking about you. Uh, me and you and all of us and everywhere, we have this spirit of disobedience that's kind of come up within us where we want what we want and we like what we like. And when something doesn't match those things, then we're against it, and we just want God to destroy it. We don't, you know, we don't naturally fall into what God's asking us to do. In 2019, I found myself in the city of Chicago uh, sitting on the porch of somebody's house, and there were a, a number of ministers around me, and we were all talking. And one of them uh, brought up the discussion because it was a matter of national news at the time. They said, listen, we're all pastors of churches, what would you do if the President of the United States today uh, called you on a Sunday morning before service and said, listen, I'd like to stop by your church today and, and just have you pray for me? What, what would you do? And, and, and I'm sitting there going, well, that's an easy one. Scripture lays it out really clear what we're supposed to do. And what an opportunity to lead our congregation in, in, in this concept. But can I tell you, I was aghast at the fact that many of the ministers on that day said, I, I wouldn't have them come. 
I wouldn't have them come because I'd, afraid, I'd be afraid how my people would respond. I'd be afraid uh, how the news would respond and, and what they would say about our church and all of this. And I'm thinking, how can we not understand that as pastors, we need to lead into this principle? Lead our congregations, lead our city, lead our nation. What can be against praying for our leaders? The power to do good is not in their hands. It is in God's hands. And we need God and his spirit bringing real wisdom and real truth. If we do not pray for them, where does that come? We as Christians are called to pray for those who are in authority. How's that, how's that fitting into your life today? Now, if I say the first one's easy, the second one is challenging. It's, it's much more challenging. We're not only called to pray for those in authority in our life, we're also called to obey those who are in authority. Say obey. That's just, that's, let's just, let's be honest. This one's really tough. This goes completely against the grain of our American culture. We are rebels. Our nation was literally founded on rebellion. That's what the Revolutionary War was all about. Our rebellion against Great Britain, our uh, rebellion is built into our cultural DNA. It's just a natural part of who we are. Not only is it built, though, into our cultural DNA, it's also built into our spiritual DNA. Remember, Adam and Eve rebelled against God in, in the Garden of Eden, and we all descend from that line. And so this rebellion is, is, is called sin. There's a sin nature within all of us that is a, a, a spiritual embedding of rebellion that's a part of us that, that is always there. It's always with us. It's always something that we're having to fight against to allow God to win in our life and not rebellion to win. But can I tell you, God calls us rebels to submit and obey to those that he has placed in authority in our lives. We read earlier in Romans chapter 13, verses 1 and 2, uh, it said, uh, we saw what that said, but take a look at 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. It says the same exact thing in just a slightly different way. It says this, submit, there's this word again, submit. Submit yourselves for my sake, for the sake of the authorities? No. Submit yourself for the Lord's sake to every authority instituted among men, whether to the king as the supreme authority or to governors, and he goes on and on and on. Here's, here's the point. All throughout Scripture, our biblical mandate could not be more clear. We are called by God to submit and obey. Now, before we go any further, I already know some of, some of you are arguing with me right on this. You're arguing with me and you're going, well, we don't do everything they say. You know, there's got to be an exception to that rule, right? There's got to be an exception. And unless we talk about the exception, you're not going to listen to much else of what I say. So let's stop for a second and talk about the exception. There is one important exception to this rule. One, if the governing authority ever mandates something of you, that if you were to follow it, it would result in disobedience to God, then and only then are you justified in disobeying. Now, the problem with that is we want to make everything fall into that category, right? And we are really good at convincing ourselves that things will fall into that category. When the truth is, 99.9% .9 of things don't fit into that category, and every once in a while something does fit in. So let's explain it out. What does it look like when something does fit into that category and it's okay to disobey? I'll give you just I'll give you two examples, all right? Example number one, these are ripped right out of scripture. Uh, Exodus, in the book of Exodus, when Pharaoh ordered the Jewish midwives, uh, Shipra and Pua. Pharaoh ordered them to kill all of the male babies that were born. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 117 that these midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt had commanded them, but instead they let the boys live. I want you to think about that for a second, and I'm going to ask you to hear a little bit deeper into this, all right? I'm not going to, I'm not going to be direct, but I want to ask you to hear it. 
They were told to kill babies. This would be against what God says. This is murder. The Bible here says killing babies is murder. They went against that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let me say it again. The Bible says killing babies is murder. They went against that. See, see deeply into what I'm saying there, all right? Because these women refused to disobey God by committing murder, God honored their disobedience here. Verse number 20, it says this. So God was good to the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very mighty. You see, so there is, there is examples within Scripture about, about when it's okay to violate. Example number two, and this, is, this comes from my, my, one of my favorite stories in all the Bible. When King Nebuchadnezzar, and I've practiced that name a lot, so don't, don't feel bad if you can't get it right. When King Nebuchadnezzar commanded three guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and when I was a little kid learning this story, it was always to bed we go. It was Shadrach, Meshach, and to bed we go. I never could get that right, but it's Abednego, right? When King Nebuchadnezzar commanded Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to worship uh, these other gods to worship this golden image that he had erected. And he, he said this, he says, guys, you're either gonna worship these other gods or I'm gonna throw you into a fiery furnace and that furnace is gonna be so hot, the guys who throw you in are gonna die just from the heat on the outside, all right? When the king commanded them to do that, the authority commanded them, this is what happened, Daniel chapter three, verse number 16, it says this. They answered and said to the king, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to give you an answer concerning this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve, one and only God, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blaming fire. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. Now pay attention to what they say next. But even if he doesn't, let it be known to you, O king, that we're not going to serve your gods or worship the golden idol that you have set up with. We have one God, one God only, and only him will we worship. Here's the response. The Bible tells us that because of their response, which was in rebellion, which disobeyed the authorities of its day, because of their response, God blessed their faithfulness. The king went ahead and had them throw it into the fiery furnace, but verse number 27 tells us the results. The fire had no effect on the body of these men, nor was their head of their hair singed, nor were their trousers damaged, nor had the smell of fire even come upon them. The punishment had no effect. Why? Because God protected them. Now, here's the bigger point put in proper context now that we've talked about all sides. You ready? When our local officials ask us, to practice some things like social distancing, like not gathering in large groups in certain kinds of ways, like, like asking us to work from home whenever possible. When those kinds of things are being asked, they are not asking us to disobey God. Therefore, as Christians, we are duty-bound to submit and obey. Titus 3.1 says it this way, Remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good. Now, that's just some practical ways that, that, that are affected in this, in this uh, pandemic outbreak that we're experiencing right now. But if you look to your workplace and your boss, if you look to the school that you're at, if you look to uh, any place where there's an authority, we, we have to ask ourselves the question, how can I submit not how can I get out from under this, it's how can I submit. And understand there is a very small section of things that would push us to go outside of that. Here's my advice to you in making the decision on whether it fits into those orders or fits out of those orders. Never make the decision not to submit on your own. Why? The Bible teaches us the heart of man is deceitful. And we're able to convince ourselves of about anything we want to convince ourselves. Always go to other people around you and get wise Christian counsel on what to do and not what to do. So uh, let me give you an example of this. In October of last year, our church uh, leadership had been struggling with the fact 
that we not only uh, had, had rules on us that were limiting what we're able to do, we knew because people were telling us, calling us, talking to us, emailing us, that people who were a part of our church were hurting. They needed the fellowship of God uh, being back together. Uh, they, they, there was a spiritual loneliness. There was depression. There were all these things that were being experienced. And yet, uh, we had gone through months, months of time where the government of our state had implemented rules for houses of worship that were much more strenuous than on anything else that goes on. So, so other places had a rule where you could go up to 50% of people being a part of, you know, whether it's a restaurant or, or a business or things, but churches were being limited at the, uh, through that time at 25%. And then even if you were very large and could do it safely, they put a cap and said only 100 people can, can be there at most. Uh, and so they were treating churches differently than they were treating everything else, which we say, well, that's not right. It doesn't even fit into the laws of our land and all of this. And so we gathered together as a group of leaders and we began to discuss, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna react? Can I tell you, there were some uh, uh, emotions that were expressed on that day that said, listen, this isn't right. It violates the laws of our land. It violates the laws of God. We need to just start meeting and doing you know, what we're going to do. We need to do it safe. We always do things safe, but, but we need to do what we're going to do. And if this violates you know, what the laws of the land are, then we should just do it. There were some on that day that said, hey, you know, uh, we should just listen to what the governor says and you know, however long it goes and, and follow it, even though he's treating us different than he's treating others. And there were still others that said, there's got to be a middle ground. Uh, we've got to be able to find something. Maybe we, maybe we need to sue the state. Well, to sue the state would cost a lot of money. That would be a waste of God's resources to, uh, to do that. And it's probably going to take years of times to go through the court system. And how is this going to manage, right? And we, what were we doing? We were trying to discern that what is right before God? What is honorable before God? Because it would be really easy for us just to say, well, the Bible says do not neglect the, the assembling of yourselves together. And, and we believe in that. And there's good reasons for that. And we'll just apply that to anything. And, and we saw churches around the country, some that were doing that in ways where they were kind of thumbing their nose at the government and, and causing all kinds of, of people to look weird at churches, right? Well, we made a decision on that day we can't just go into civil disobedience. We're, we're not going to do that. We don't think that that represents Scripture, and we don't believe that the government is specifically telling us to go against God. But we said, well, what we should do is, think back to point number one, we need to begin praying more and asking God to help us. Let's give some time. It's October. If by January something ha doesn't happen, then maybe we should find some other churches. Maybe we should look into the legal ramifications and those answers. But let's pray and see if God doesn't do something. Well, can I tell you, in January of this year, I got a phone call. I wasn't reaching out. We were just praying. But I got a phone call from what is the largest nonprofit legal institution in our world. And they called me and they said, Sean, how's things going in Connecticut? It kind of seems like Connecticut churches are being treated different than, than all over the country. We're concerned about that. Our, our role is to keep church doors open and to make sure that, that everything's being followed right constitutionally as it results to churches. And the churches would never be seen as less than a Sam's or a Walmart, less than a restaurant, less than a casino, less than any of these things. And so We've been looking at churches in your state. We've been trying to evaluate the church's attitudes. We've, we've looked at your website. We've looked at the rules that you follow. We've looked at how you've tried to follow uh, what the government says. And we've identified you as a good representative for the church of Jesus Christ and challenging the orders that are there. We've been looking for a church that wouldn't be angry, that wouldn't be trying to do the rules on their own ways. We've tried to find a church that would represent what we think is a godly way, and we're coming to you because we want to tell you we'd love to represent you in this with the state, and we'll pay all of the costs. And we think we can get this solved within a week or two. If it, if it has to go to court, we'll take it to court, it will, but we'll do it with a, with a humble attitude. But we think we can do this outside of the courts and make some things go. And so for the last three or four weeks, you haven't known this, but I've been talking with them and with others behind the scenes until a week ago last Thursday, I was on a conversation with these lawyers in the afternoon, and they said, Sean, we've just got some great news from behind the scenes. 
Uh, there's been back channel conversations through all of this, knowing what you're doing and where you're going, and, and we've been talking to it. And the governor has said that either today he's going to make an announcement or uh, uh, that, that he's going to lift the caps and treat churches the same as everybody else, or they'll get the things in process in the beginning of next week. They're going to make it. So watch at 4 o'clock. You're going to see it happen. And by the way, it's because you were willing to follow the rules. You had the right heart and the right attitude. And then you were willing to step forward and have this conversation. And we sat and watched and we praised God. And we said, look, God moved the hand of how this, he put all the things in places. I didn't even have an answer of who to call. They called us. Can I tell you that God blesses you when you try to work in the right ways. He does it in his timing and his ways. Now, uh, let, me, let me show you one other thing. Because, because if you'll follow the authorities, eventually God will bless you. In this time, where as a church, we had to do things we didn't want to do. It was going to slow everything down that we're doing. It was all the plans, everything that we had in place uh, was going to be more challenging as we follow the rules. Can I tell you that God has blessed us and moved us forward in ways that we would have never thought before? This year, our hope, or excuse me, last year in 2020, our hopes and goals were that we would launch an additional campus in East Windsor. We not only launched that additional campus in East Windsor, and many of you are sitting there today in that campus, we not only launched that campus, we also launched an additional campus online that was nowhere in our plans. We did it because we were forced to do it in order to walk, on, uh, walk through the right ways. And there are many of you that are part of our online campus today that are here a part of our church, and that online campus is going to go forward. So we intended to watch Lund Campus, where instead we've launched two campuses, and we've had leadership step forward to fill different needs and roles in ways that they would have never had the opportunity to do before, except for what we were going through. Now, we put together a little video. It's a short video. I wanted to share it with you. It expresses some of the good things that's been happening in the last year, and it's going to explain to you some new leadership opportunities that we're, uh, that people are being placed into. It's going to talk about three campus pastors that we've established that are going to serve under me, one at each of the different campuses. You're going to get to hear a little bit about it. All of this made possible through God helping us to be successful even through these challenging times. Go ahead. Let's turn our attention to the video screen. 2020 brought a lot of exciting opportunities for Crossroads. First, in response to the pandemic, our team launched an online campus with just one week's notice. This has been a huge blessing as it has helped uh, our entire church family stay connected uh, during the time of last year. Uh, we then reworked everything that we do at our East Hartford campus to be able to welcome as many people as safely as possible uh, by the month of June. And it's been exciting to see people kind of work through everything in regards to that. Uh, in August, we opened our East Windsor campus for in-person services for the very first time. And we're currently holding two services there every Sunday morning. Uh, we've seen so many new faces and heard so many great stories of people coming and, and beginning to worship God. As we begin the year 2021, we're trying our best to position ourselves to be able to minister most effectively at each of these three campuses, East Hartford, East Windsor, and online. To do this, we have named a campus pastor who will shepherd each of these three campuses. Uh, they're gonna work alongside the volunteer teams to help reach the lost and make fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. This will allow me as the senior pastor to focus on the big picture mission of Crossroads, uh, to study, uh, to, to spend the time preaching and equipping our campuses and the ministers who, who are doing the work of the ministry. The campus pastors will have many responsibilities. Let me give you just a few here today. First of all, they will be the primary point of connection uh, for the congregations that they are helping to support. Uh, they're going to oversee the events at their campuses, lead volunteer teams at their campuses, and lead the congregation during our altar response times uh, where we're reaching out to God together. Uh, I want to take a moment today here to introduce you to the campus pastors. First of all, Pastor Sterling Key is going to be our East Hartford campus pastor. For the past six years, he has served as the director of student ministries alongside his wife, Kendra. If you've had the opportunity to work with him, you know he is hardworking. He's a team player. 
He loves people and he's a lot of fun. Crossroads family. I'm so excited to be the campus pastor here in East Hartford. For over six years, my wife Kendra and I, we had had the privilege and honor of working beside you to reach people who are lost and help them become fully devoted followers of Christ. And so what I wanna say is pray with me, be excited with me for the harvest here in the greater Hartford area. Pastor Steven Rivera is gonna be our East Windsor campus pastor. Pastor Steve grew up at Crossroads and then went to serve as the youth pastor at Bethany Church. At the end of 2019, Pastor Steve came back to Crossroads as the East Windsor assistant campus pastor. Uh, well, Pastor Steve has jumped in with both feet and he has done a great job to build a, a wonderful team at East Windsor. Uh, he's a super friendly guy and I know he'd love to meet you. If you don't know him already, reach out, get to know him. Well, Crossroads, who would have thought that in the middle of a pandemic, we would be opening up a brand new campus here in East Windsor. Uh, we have literally gone beyond the walls and we are beyond blessed and excited to be the campus pastors of this church here in East Windsor. We are, we are so excited for what God has in store, not only for this church, but in the community all around us. Thank you so much. We love you and we can't wait to see what God does. Pastor Luke Monahan is our online campus pastor. Pastor Luke has been serving as our director of IT, uh, director of small groups. Uh, he oversees our Crossroads Bible Institute and our connection with Southeastern University. Uh, pastor, pastor Luke loves to teach. He's a great problem solver. And again, he loves people. Uh, he's gonna be uh, creating innovative ways for us uh, as an online church to connect with those who are in our online congregation. Hey, Crossroads, so good to be with you as the online campus pastor. Many of us have been on this journey together for months, and I am so excited to see what God is going to do in this online campus. Thanks for allowing me to be in your home week after week. I look forward to talking with you soon. If you're part of that group that's connecting with us online, I'd encourage you to shoot Pastor Luke an email. He would love to hear from you. Listen, when we started the year 2020, we were looking forward to going beyond our East Hartford walls and opening our East Windsor campus. We had no idea that we would be going way beyond our church walls and into your homes through our online campus. God has been faithful and we've been able to continue to minister despite everything happening around us. I'm so excited for our future together. We are ready and excited to move forward in Him. We're looking forward to the harvest that is to come. And if you're not already connected or involved serving, I want to encourage you today to reach out to one of these campus pastors where you're located. They'll help you to get started. Let's work together to see lives changed for eternity in Him. God bless you. So... <laughs> Praise God. So remember the focus of that, uh, whether it's East Hartford, East Windsor, online, uh, the idea there is, is to say, uh, God, because we, we put ourselves in a position of honoring authority, has blessed us through the last year, has taken us farther than we ever thought we could have gone. Forget the fact that there was a pandemic and all of these things that are, that are put in place. If we will obey, God will bless us in those times. So pray, obey. Number three, last one, and this is just real quick. We are called by God to influence the people uh, who are in authority in our lives. And I'm going to jump through a lot of my notes here to, to 1 Peter chapter 2, uh, verse number 13. Peter here is addressing a, uh, a Christian citizens that are living in a predominantly non-Christian society. And here's what he tells them. Pay attention to the first words that I'm going to say. For the Lord's sake. I want you to say that with me. For the Lord's sake. What, what he is about here to say here. He's saying not in relation to what we're going to get out of it, not in relation to what anybody else is going to get out of it. What he's about to say is for the Lord's sake, for God's sake. He says, submit to all human authority, whether the king is the head of state or to the officials he has appointed, fear God and respect the king. And if you keep walking through the rest of the, of the verses there where Peter's talking to us, this is what he's going to say. People are watching your lives. People are watching your lives. Those who are in authority are watching us as Christians today. 
And the crazy thing is that the Christian church responds in a lot of different ways. And in many times, the Christian church and the disciples of Christ today in our world don't do a good job of representing God. And when we don't do a job, a good job of representing God, it pushes away people from God. It pushes away people in authority from God. But when we respond as Jesus did, go back and read through the life of Jesus. Jesus responded to, to authority by humbling himself at every point, by, by honoring who God is. When we do that for God's sake, then people get a picture of who he really is. And they still may be mad at us for certain things and yell at us in certain things. But on the inside, we have to understand that God is working on this spirit to say, this is who I am. Look at this. And when you look at what they're doing, ask yourself this question. Why are they doing that? They're doing that because they're my followers. And when people see that and they're forced to look at Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us that he calls everybody unto him. And they have an opportunity to get to know him and have their lives changed for eternity. Are these things that God asks us to do easy? No, not all the time. Why? Because we're rebels at heart. But we've been called to a new way of living, the way of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are called to pray, to obey, and to influence. That is who he has called us to be. And I'm so thankful to be a part of a church that through the years, that is who we have been. Let's stand and pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to a conclusion of another one of our worship times together, one more time, I want to pause and thank you for your word that leads us and guides us into all truth. Lord, would you help us to find ways to practically apply the truth of your word to our life. All of us today, Lord, we we can do a better job of getting on our knees and humbly calling out on you to bring wisdom and encouragement to our leaders. All of us probably can take steps in our lives to do a better job of obeying and and honoring the leaders in our lives. And all of us here desire so much that you would shine through our lives in ways that we would be an influence on the people around us so that they might come to know you. Today, we give you our praise through our lives lived out in service to you. Amen. Friends, we're going we're gonna to finish our worship time here together by singing one more song together. And I want to ask you to pay close attention to the words. The words talk about the concept of us uh, being open to God using us and doing through us what he would have us to do. I want to ask you to sing the words of this kind of like a closing prayer where we can say, God, I'm open to you. I, I want to I serve you use my life in these ways. Let's sing it together as an act of praise. Here I am with open hands yes. Yes. Counting on your grace again it's only through your grace. Less of me and more of you I just want to see Lift your voices for a moment.
that's our joint prayer today. We are available to be used by you. Fill us with your spirit and with your love and help us to take your love and share it with people all around us that they might come to know you and the power of your grace in this day. We give you all the praise for you alone are worthy. Amen and amen. Crossroads family, it is so awesome to be here with you. Today. Crossroads, thanks for being with us. I know that you have encountered God today. And if in response, you're ready to do something more to take a next step, then I have just one simple thing for you to do. Text the word BEGIN to 80123, and we will follow up with you to start and continue your journey of growing closer to God. Look forward to seeing you next time.